Memory text for this week is Isaiah 55, 9, and it segues right into our lesson now. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. What does this mean? How are God's ways higher than our ways? They, they aren't af- affected by self-centeredness. They aren't affected by uh, the, the infection that we've got. He's unaffected by that. And uh, he has also, I think, power we don't have. I mean, capabilities we don't have. Other thoughts? Yes. Wendell. When you think about just something, quote, simple, like heredity or genetics, he can look at the code and read it. Yep. And the vastness of... So he not only understands those facts, but he can also understand the end result. And so to be able to read cause and effect and just our natural and, and foretell the future, he, he knows what's going to happen. Now you weren't suggesting he foretells the future by reading the genetic code. No. Okay, I just wanted to clear that up. Somebody mis- might have misunderstood what you were linking there. Yeah. Okay. But just the vastness... I mean, it's just... I mean, how, how much higher is infinite than finite? Right. Okay, how much higher is infinite? So, so on one aspect, his ways are... But you notice something, he, he didn't say... He didn't say, and I'm going to read this text again, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my abilities are higher than your abilities, and my power is higher than your powers. Is that what it says? No. But that's what you guys are talking about. Not always. I mean, a lot of this has to do with his thought. How he thinks... <laughs> is far beyond the scope. It's like us in a minnow. How we think is far beyond anything a minnow could conceive of. Okay. And so we aren't talking, because I do think God is infinite in power, in knowledge, in, in, in omniscient ability to know the future. But I don't think he's primarily focusing on those omniscient abilities. But, but that gives, his abilities give him the ability Okay. Now, I'm going to suggest that's not true. I'm going to suggest it's not that he's all-powerful or all-knowing. It's the character of the one who has those abilities. And it's not because he has those abilities that gives him the character. Are you suggesting because he's all-powerful, that's why he has good character? No, it's, it's because he has those abilities, his character, which is even f- further beyond that, allows him to do things that we can't comprehend. So... Notice, this is where I'm going. Rather than, yes, he's got all these abilities we don't have, but notice what he's focusing on here. It's, he's focusing on his ways. My ways are higher than your ways, my thoughts. So I think he's focusing on his methods, how he works, not his, uh, not his power to work, but his methodology in how he works is higher than our ways. And of course, I, I'm not in any way suggesting he isn't all-powerful or all-knowing or infinite. I'm not suggesting that at all. But I'm suggesting that's not his focal point, that he's focusing on his method of using those abilities that is higher than our ways. Well, not only that, <clears throat> our thoughts are limited by the sin that we experience in life from the very beginning. And God is so much higher than that, never having any... Okay, problem. I like where you're going with that. So our methods are... And so, so the methods of Adam and Eve prior to the fall, their ways of doing business prior to the fall, might have been in harmony with God's ways. yes. yes. Okay? And their thoughts, you know, our thoughts are we brought captivity to his thought, talks about, you know, so we're to have the mind of Christ, let every thought be brought captive to Jesus Christ, it says in Scripture. So in God's eternal plan, one day our thoughts will be in harmony with his thoughts. Our thoughts will be like his thoughts. Not infinite, but along the same avenues and same value system and the same principles. We all agree with that so far? So I like where you're going. There's something wrong with our way of thinking and our way of operating, our ways of doing things. So what are our ways? What methods do sinful human beings and earthly governments use for governing? Self-preservation. Okay, self-preservation. And what method does self-preservation use? Yeah. What, what, and, 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 okay, let's talk about the, the big themes. Everybody, and this is what the lesson's about. Justice. What's fair? Lesson's going to talk about fairness. What does justice look like in a human way of thinking? Eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. In our human law here in Western society, when a criminal's done a crime and the police says we we want to help 
your loved one get justice? It's retribution. What are they talking about? Punish the offender. That's what exactly. This is so. How does human law work? Coercion. It, impose rules that require coercion. Yeah. Yes. If you or I had the power that Christ had when He was on the cross, we would have come down. Because our ways are not his ways. That's exactly right. Yeah, no, exactly. And what would we have done with that power? We'd have punished people for doing us wrong. They had no right to do that. Sure. Okay. God says that he does not operate his government like we operate earthly governments. Does this say that God does not inflict punishment for sin? Yes. No. Some might be concerned that to take that idea just from that one passage that I'm reading something into there, I'm projecting my own thoughts, I've got a bias that I'm reading into the, into the text because it really doesn't say that in the passage I read, and, and some might argue that I'm reading that in. So let's go back and read the verses right before this and read it all in context.